How you doing? So questions for you to start with. What exactly does it mean to be authentic in your marketing? Does that mean you have to bear your soul? And if so, how do you manage those feelings of exposure and vulnerability that can come as a result? Where is that line between being real and honest and taking care of your inner self and your inner sense of security? There's a big conversation happening out there amongst conscious entrepreneurs uh, in, my, in my sphere, in my, in my area of work at this moment, exactly about this topic. There's a huge call out there to, to market in a different way, to, be, to kind of be deep, dive deeper into this authentic marketing idea. I've seen it called the new marketing out there and it's different to the mainstream. So different to what you might see out there, all those Facebook ads telling us there is one way to do everything and my rags to riches story. So it's a big conversation out there and I've been, uh, it's come up a lot more recently, but I've been talking about it with my business buddies and my clients for about the last six months. So I thought I'd make this video and share some of the thoughts and ideas uh, that I've had and that I've had with my business buddies and in the hope that they might help you as well. So if you don't know me, I'm Lynn Horde, the Joy Coach, founder of the Conscious connecting event, the Joy Jam Sessions, creator of the online course, the Joy, Joy School, and host of the syndicated radio show, Give Me the Joy. And if you haven't seen that recently, you can look further down this page in case you're interested in listening in to that show. It was very fun. So I want to welcome you to this Facebook Live series. Uh, it's actually going to be around the, the, top, the hot topics or the... Um, Let's call them challenges and challenges or conversations that I've been having the most in the last uh, last six months or so, and more so recently uh, through the women who come to the Joy Jam sessions, through my business buddies, uh, and so this particular video is going to be around authentic marketing. Uh, and again, one of the things I'll share a bit later is you know I'm no expert, but I am um, really curious about it, and so I wanted to kind of put this out here and see what else. Um, and share what uh, the thoughts that I've had and what you may have also had along the way. So as I said, this is the first video in a series. Um, I'll be sharing more of those over the next couple of days. Um, so this one's for you if you're concerned about, you know, potentially sharing too much, which is a conversation I've had recently. Like how much is, how much is enough for authentic marketing? Um, you know, where do we want to come from when we're, we're sharing our marketing in an authentic way? And um, I'll be just sharing my thoughts and my take on that and what other people have said in the conversations that I've had. So before we dig into this, though, it's totally worth saying that one of the fundamentals I feel about being a conscious entrepreneur from my perspective is recognizing that everybody's journey is different. So, you know, if you're here listening to this, you are 100 percent, you know, I'm sure a conscious entrepreneur, which means that, you know, you are out there doing big things in the world. You want to raise a vibration. You want to make an impact and you want to have a difference. So we have that in common and we share that vision. But the way our journey towards creating that in the world is going to be very different. And I wanted to say that um, because, you know, right now, like, for instance, how much I could share authentically might be very different to what you feel comfortable sharing. And conversely, I know that out there in the world right now, there are women sharing way more than I feel comfortable, um, you know, and I'm, I'm still working towards greater levels. So I just wanted to put that out there, first of all, and so that everybody's journey is different. Um, and that's one of the beautiful things about being a conscious entrepreneur is that we can support each other in those differing journeys, but we share very similar experiences. Um, you know, and this one, you know, in, in, in my, in my personal, my personal view, and I know others share it as well, is that, you know, sharing authentically is something I see as kind of my, my duty, um, because there is such power when we share authentically. You know, when I am real, I'm going to show you a story <laughs> about being real on this video in a second. Um, but, you know, when we, when we share and we are real and authentic, like the power of that, and I'll be talking about one of the reasons why it's so powerful, um, the power in that both, and I have both seen it when I have shared authentically, you know, as someone who shares about the journey to joy, you know, I don't now share for, share about it around you know I have I've got all the answers um you know and they and that really is so powerful pe for people to hear 
And conversely, I've been on the receiving end of others who've shared their journeys. I'm like, oh, you know, thank God for that. You know, really hearing the truth of what's going on for them. So, and I know that you know this, you know, it's more of a reminder of how powerful it can be when we share authentically. Um, so today I'm going to talk about a, little, a couple of the reasons why we can find it so challenging and some tips that I have used and that other people have used to kind of make that journey, um, you know, easier and progress more into your own authenticity. Um, so let's talk about some of the, the common challenges. So when you think about authentic marketing, like what comes up for you? Um, so some of the biggest challenges I've experienced myself um, and have seen common themes is around, first of all, that feeling like you're putting your head above the parapet and in the firing line. So kind of think of that as your general fear of visibility. I don't know anyone who doesn't have this to some degree. Uh, I certainly had it. I was super lucky because just before I started sharing on um, doing more speaking and, and doing more things publicly around my work. I actually did some work with a woman named Holly Wharton. I'll give her a shout out. Um, and she really cleared some stuff around uh, visibility for me. So in terms of, you know, my greater visibility, I've still got more to grow into, but I was so grateful that she helped me with that. So that's, that's kind of one of the, the immediate challenges is that just that fear of kind of being visible. Um, the second one is a fear of overwhelm. So it's that, and this is funny, so if you imagine that you've got greater visibility, um, for me, one of the greatest fears is then of overwhelm. It was, it's actually quite funny to think about a fear of overwhelm, having too much exposure and I'll be inundated with clients. Oh, wouldn't that be a blessing? No, and, and I find it quite funny because that's a very ego response. Like, oh, I'll be more visible and then like I'll have this flood of people. Generally, case that's not the reality when you grow in visibility. It is, it does trickle in, but it's interesting to notice that that fear is there because it blocks us, doesn't it? That fear of overwhelm, and then the deeper fear, which I um, have noticed a lot more recently, is that fear of exposure, that fear of somebody seeing your deeper underbelly, um, or not seeing you at your best. Um, you know, and fearing judgment and ultimately rejection as a result of that. You know, so that's that illusion that we need to be perfect. And I'll, I've got a story of my own to share uh, recently about that as we go along. Oh, excuse me, I need a little hiccup there. So how do we, um, how do we keep releasing those fears in, in judgment in order for us to show up as our true selves? So one of the things to fall back on, so this is my, my first tip, is you know, if you're a conscious entrepreneur, I know that one of your values is going to be authenticity. You know, I know that you'll be striving to, to continually grow into and be more so authentic and real and honest in your communications. And I'm sure that you, like a lot of women out there, oh, excuse me, a lot of women out there, you know, you're... You're tired of those rags to riches stories that just do this one thing and it'll be great. All of the airbrush posts that we see on Facebook, you know, all of those things really tie us up, can tie us up in knots. So, and I know that you'll be sick of that and so am I. So this is where this whole new marketing thing is coming from. How can we do this in a different way? You know, those, um, the people telling us, you know, to do it just this one way and we're like, we know there's not just one way. And the, that, that there's no there's no magic bullet i think that's the phrase i'm looking for there's no magic bullet you know and there there are very few people who just one thing actually works for them so first of all it's you know having that value of authenticity and recognizing that you know the more we share around you know what is real for us the more it all becomes normalized that actually you know everybody's journey is different we all kind of react and respond to things in different ways and, you know, one of the, the, the reason it's so important for more of us to share the entirety of our journey, because that's what we're really talking about, you know, the ups and the downs, as well as the good times, is because people out there are judging themselves, you know, against that, that projection of perfection, right? You know, and that makes them feel bad. It makes them feel inadequate. It makes them give up on the journey because they think that they're never going to get there. You know, and I've been caught 
in that trap myself, you know, when looking on Facebook before, you know, I still have to really watch myself is that because there is so much of the, you know, I've got it all, all sorted and I've got it all made out there. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm, I don't feel like I'm, you know, I can shrink. I mean, oh, I don't feel like I've made it there yet. I've got such a long way to go. Um, rather than just kind of be authentic in where I'm at, keep hanging on to my message and my vision uh, and keep sharing in that authentic way. So I'll give you an example for myself of how this has shifted for me recently. So just this week I had a conversation with my own mentor in Australia and we were talking about like what kind of joy coach do I want to be? And I've written about this on my blog. And, you know, I felt this pressure to, to be someone who kind of knew it all, who was the shiny example of joy, you know, when you would see me on Facebook or out there, um, you know, in, uh, in my posts and stuff. Um, you know, and I was like, well, I'm, uh, but I'm not, you know, I am not a hundred percent joyful all the time. I am, um, you know, my life isn't perfect. There are, there are parts of my, my life I would love to be different. So it was really, um, it was, I was feeling a, that real tension between, well, I'm trying to present myself as this person, but actually it doesn't feel authentic. And she and I have had this conversation before, but I kind of finally realized what was really underneath that, you know, and I was, it was, and we'll come to that. But what I want to kind of point out is that when we, we aren't that auth, that authentic, I think one of the reasons is that the, the backlash against it right now is it creates that dichotomy between us and them, right? You know, it makes it like, you know, they're here and we're here and, you know, just follow our pathway and you'll get to where we're at. But the journey is never that linear. And um, where is that? Like if I say I'm here, where is that? I mean, my life, as I said, isn't perfect. I am, do I know a lot about joy? Absolutely. You know, if I come a long way on my own journey, for sure. But I am still in, I'm still in the game. I'm still, I'm still traipsing day to day, figuring out the whole joy thing. And it was great because having this conversation with my my mentor really helped me see that I had an ego hold on that whole being perfection, uh, perfe um, being seen as, as having, having got it all together. And it was my inner desire to, to feel perfect and have, and kind of present that, um, what's that? It's that phrase, the, the perfectionist tendency that I know many of us can have. So, and it was so freeing. I was so relieved when we'd had that conversation. I had a little cry and then I was like, wow, oh my gosh, you know, I because the reality is I don't want to be, um, I don't want to be perfect and I don't want to be, um, sorry, I do want to be authentic. I do want to share the journey, you know, and the power of that, as you guys all know, and again, I'm probably just reminding you, you know, the power in me saying I am on the journey still, you know what, we're in it together. There is an us. And I had this experience with a client of mine the other day because she is innately one of the, the qualities that she exudes is power. And I've known her for a long time and we've, we've done some work together recently um, and I've been coaching her around some stuff. But her actual presence of being innately and in, powerful, like actually, and I said to her the other day, I was like, hey, you know what, you just being the powerful self that you are gives me permission to be that way too. And, you know, it was a perfect example of just being ourselves, sharing our reality. Um, so I know that's a little bit different. That's her innate um, desire, her innate essence of being powerful. And I'm also sharing about, you know, my journey of joy along that way, you know, that I'm still figuring out as I go. But all of those things, and this is one of the tickets, is to remember that, we are giving, you know, by being that way, by being authentic with who we are, by my friend not subduing her powerful self, by me admitting and saying, like, I am still on the journey to joy, it gives people permission to be exactly where they are. I guess that's my, my point in, in, in us being more authentic and sharing the highs and the lows is everybody can see that, you know, we're all still, we're, we're all on the journey. No one really has it sorted out. And that just gives us all permission to keep going forward. But more importantly, it gives us hope. It keeps giving us hope that there is um, possibility for us, that we, we have a chance to attain that joy, you know, to, to, to gather that success, to be even more authentic in our marketing. You know, it gives us hope that, you know, from where we are to where we want to get to 
it is totally possible for us. So, so what I'm saying is, you know, being authentic gives you know, us permission to just be ourselves and honestly that is way more fun on the journey. It gives other people permission along the way to go, you know what, I'm doing fine just where I am. It gives us um, hope. It gives us hope that actually we can keep moving forward. We can keep reaching for whatever it is that thing that we're attaining is because, you know, the person we're watching and, and getting inspiration from is saying, you know what, keep going. You will get there too. And the other piece in here is to recognize, and I've kind of just hit on it then when I told my story about my conversation with my mentor recently, is that we are, we can get, we can allow ourselves to be contributors rather than gurus. So that's kind of the other perspective shift from when we're doing authentic marketing is, you know, I'm not trying to be the expert or the guru. I'm trying to be a contributor. And the first time I heard that was from a lady named Denise Duffield Thomas, um, better known as the lucky bitch, the money, the money woman. And when I read that in her blog a couple of years ago, it was such a relief. I'm like, oh, now that is the perspective that I can get behind, that I can feel authentic about. I am a contributor, not a guru. So you probably heard that before, but again, we can get caught up in that trap of needing to be the, 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 the perfectionist, the expert. You know, we, we're told a lot in the marketing world, like go and be an expert. So, but that, that title can, can come with it, the idea that I know everything. So what I prefer to call myself is a leader. I'm trying to lead the way in my sphere of the world. And that frees me up to go again, to not say that I know it all, but that I, that I, I'm, I'm committed to this journey. For me, it's about, about joy and sharing joy. Um, for you, it might, you know, obviously it will be something different, but you know, it's about being a leader. It makes me feel much more authentic and, and something I can really step into. I want to be a leader and I am a leader. Um, so that's kind of another way of thinking about being authentic. And I had a great, um, conversation in my Facebook group the other day about and it's something I really agree with is around I feel like it's really my duty to be um, to to continue authentically marketing in the best way I can um, because you know you and I are leaders we are leading this wave of you know conscious entrepreneurs out there trying to raise consciousness and as I said at the beginning make an impact and make a difference and, you know, one of the ways that we do that is through the authentic marketing. Um, but it is part of what I would call our calling and, our, and our, it is our duty to do that because we are leading the way. So it's the other thing. So if you, um, you know, if you, when you're sitting down to do your marketing, whether it's, you know, you're selling something new or you're sharing a story on your blog, you know, sit in, remember, like, I, I know you know this. I know you feel this. You may not call yourself a leader, but you are. And sink into that concept that, you know, if I'm leading here, if I am showing the way to others, how do I want to be in this, um, in this call, in this Facebook Live, in, in the blog that I'm sharing today? And I've got a funny story that you'll laugh at. So I'm here talking about authentic marketing. And I think I probably sat in front of my computer for two hours before I actually pressed go live today. Because I was like, oh, you know, I've got some notes and maybe they'll, they'll, they'll notice that I'm reading them. Um, you know, what if I don't get the messages across right? You know, what if um, someone hears my messages and says, oh, my God, I've heard all of that before. So all of my shit got in the way and I sat here in front of this computer for two hours. But again, you know, it's back to that, how do I want to be? You know, how do I want to be as a leader? I want to show up for you because there'll be somebody, even if you have heard this, you might need this reminder today. And this is exactly what happened when I shared something in my Facebook group yesterday. A woman popped on and says, wow, I really needed to hear this again today. And that's what we're trying to do, isn't it? Just slowly by slowly, heap people, uh, help people help people remember help people remember or give them a little shift you know and I don't know what you're going to take away from this today but you know I have to keep remembering as you know in authentic marketing it's trusting that what I'm sharing today will resonate with you in some way it might be a tiny thing you know or maybe it'll be like oh this is totally not for me and you'll go and find what is so that's the other piece for me around authentic marketing is really sinking into and trusting that you as an individual are meant to be here on this planet sharing your particular message. 
It won't resonate with everybody, but there are so many people that it will resonate with. So sinking into that trust is also another piece in the puzzle for authentic marketing for me. And then the other piece I want to feel like I want to share about today is around so I've had lots of conversations around, um, you know, sharing authentically and being afraid of vulnerability, you know, that kind of having someone had a great phrase the other, the other day about a vulnerability hangover. So that's, you know, sharing your journey, you know, sharing things that have happened to you. And then the other thing is around uh, authentic sales. So that's a much bigger conversation. But again, it's we're trying to find this new way because we've been taught, you know, all of the email sequences to share. Um, you know, all of the ways that it can be done. And there's nothing innately wrong with those. And I guess for me, it comes back to what is your intention and are you detached from the outcome? So, you know, part of the reason for this series is I'm going to be launching the Joy Jam Collective you know, online membership community. And I was like, oh, you know, um, you know, and I had my icky feeling around like, oh, you know, is this the right way to do it? But again, I was like, what is my intention here? And the intention behind this communication and the community is to really help women come together, support each other to, you know, stay aligned and, and kind of, you know, go on this journey of being a conscious entrepreneur together. So more about that another time, but it's coming back to my intention. So, so back to the, so again, oh gosh, I actually did have notes and then I've got some, all of these ideas have flooded in. So, okay. So to recap, it's about so authentic marketing for me and for the conversations that I've have I have been having. It is around remembering that us being authentic is part of our mission and part of our duty and part of our calling. In my in my opinion, it's remembering that when you are authentic, you give um, permission and and share the entirety of your journey. You give permission for other people to be where they're at. You give permission for other people to not be perfect, and you give them hope. You give them hope that, that what is possible for you is possible for them as well. Remembering that we want to, you know, it, we can be a contributor. We don't have to be an, a guru or an expert. And the word I use is we can be a leader. You know, you can be a leader and that doesn't mean you know everything. But you're, you're doing your best to lead the way. And lastly, to remember um, that the last point I said then was around oh, intention. So what is your intention? Like if I'm sitting down ultimately sharing this with you because I want to make your life better, I want to make your life easier, I want you to grow in more joy, I want you to enjoy the journey of being a conscious entrepreneur and if this conversation can help you, then like amazing, like that is awesome and I have to sit and trust that that is enough. That is enough, that me showing up, sharing the message is enough. So they're kind of the four things I wanted to share about that. And I've just had a quick look at my notes and there is one other really big piece, which I know you know, but it's really important to put this in here. So authentic sharing can bring up, you know, vulnerability and those feelings of exposure. And as someone on the same journey as me, you know that that's all about doing the inner work. It's about understanding where those fears come from, understanding, you know, how to fill those needs within us and how to, you know, keep, you know, basically keep peeling the onion so that we can we can grow in our in our comfort zone in terms of what we can authentically share. You know, and I have come, uh, you know, I've, I've certainly come leaps and bounds on the journey, but there is a load more that I could share, but I'm not comfortable with yet. So I'll keep peeling my onion, keep doing my inner work, um, keep reminding myself, like I did when I sat down in front of this uh, computer today, that, you know, what's my intention and if I'm sharing from a place of love and um, generosity and caring, you know, because I want you to have a better journey or I want you to, to keep enjoying your journey more, then, you know, that, that energy is where I'm coming from. So, um, so that was my little recap. Just going to check my notes um, here to make sure I'm covering off everything that I wanted to. And that was something for me to let go of. I can sit and do Facebook lives often um, and I'll just riff. But today I was like, I really wanted to cover off some key points. I'm like, oh, but people are going to think that me having notes is not cool. But again, what's my intention is to um, give you this information, share this, this knowledge and these ideas and tips with you and hope that they make your journey better. So um, let me just check in on my notes. Yes. So the other people, the, um, the other little bit around there is 
um, so where, and I mentioned uh, one of the questions I said at the beginning was, you know, how do we know when too much is, is, is when we're sharing too much? And I don't know that there is such a thing as too much, but there is, there is how much can you handle as an individual? So a couple of my clients recently have talked about this and they all went, they've recently gone through some really difficult times and they knew they wanted to share about it because of all the things that they learned along the journey. But what they, what they did was allow enough time to pass before it did, they weren't triggered anymore. So I think that's the thing showing up when you're, when what you're going to be talking about can still trigger you in a big way, then I personally am not comfortable with that. And I think that can cause us a little bit more trauma. So um, what we want to do is make sure that we keep releasing and working through whatever is being triggered and then 100% like sharing that and what you've learned is going to be really valuable for your community. So that's back to the point that I talked about at the beginning that it's really down to your journey. You know, this is, this is where are you on the journey? What, what's the next little step in terms of expanding your comfort zone that you can handle? And, um, and remembering that. So don't compare yourself with somebody else who's, who's been, you know, who he just has a way different comfort zone when it comes to how much they're willing to share. It's what you can do on a day-to-day basis to grow in your authenticity. So a couple of stories I shared today in the past, I would not have been able to share those. Um, but because, um, you know, the process happened really quickly, it's not triggering for me now. Um, I'm, I'm willing to share, but it's just coming back to where are you and how comfortable are you and what can you do a little bit to expand in your comfort zone. Okay. So I think that was, so it's the permission, give yourself permission. Um, realize authentic communication is an act of service because, you know, we, where you're coming from energetically is you're trying to help somebody else in some way. Um, keep doing the inner work to release, you know, what's kind of been, been triggering you. And remember, so the impact of authentic marketing and why we as conscious entrepreneurs want to do that is because it makes us more real as humans. It makes us more relatable. It gives people real hope. And for us personally, it brings a sense of ease and peace. And that's certainly been my experience. The more I'm able to reveal of myself, um, again, in a, in a non-triggered way, you know, God, it just it allows me to sink even more deeply into myself. Um, and the truth is people out there are really crying out for this honest way of communicating because we're all sick and tired of the perfectionist crap, to be honest. And I bought into it for a long time, for sure. Um, but I just don't want to be that way anymore. And I know um, people are really craving for real and honest communication. So that's what I feel like ultimately authentic communication is all about. And you, my friends, are, are part of the crew leading the way. So I just want to honour your contribution, whatever it is. I know that you will be contributing. So this video has all been around exploring the authentic communication, you know, what gets in the way and what are some tips to help us um, and some mind, mindset shifts for us in terms of growing into more authentic sharing. So this is video one. So video two, I'm going to be sharing the next video is all around another shift or another, com another big conversation I've been seeing out there in the world. And that is about becoming more embodied. So it's that, that move from uh, running your business and your life from your head to running it from your heart. Um, you know, and that fundamental shift to following more of your intuition, your inner guidance, um, and growing into greater service because you're, you're coming from your heart space. And um, I'll be talking about finding that balance. Um, and as someone who's really cerebral, and I know a lot of my clients and, and my business buddies are, is you know finding that balance between you know using the head and the heart and you know which one comes first and how do we use them in tandem um you know i find it's a fascinating conversation but that whole embodied piece that is a really big conversation i've seen out there and a big shift that's really happening um and getting much more in touch with our feelings our emotions our body and our inner guidance so that's what's going to be in the the next video i'll be having fun with that so with this particular video, you know, I would love to hear your thoughts on the topic because as I said, I'm a contributor, um, you know, I'm, I'm growing this uh, conscious women in business uh, community and you are part of that and I would love to hear what you have to say on this. 
Um, you know, so how, where are you at with authentic marketing? You know, what do you, do you have any top tips for, you know, how you've grown into your, yourself or a, any comments on, on the things that I've said, you know, I'd really love for you to share them below so that we can continue the conversation. Uh, if you found this video useful, please share it on Facebook or, you know, with a friend or a, or a colleague or a business buddy that you think would be interested in this conversation as well. Um, and lastly, you know, what we've talked about today you know, is one of the key conversations as I said that I've noticed out there in the um, conscious entrepreneur community or well, the one that I've certainly um, been um, swirling in or in the sphere of. Um, so here we, you know, we are here to help raise consciousness. We are here to help raise the vibe. And I also believe from my perspective, we are here to enjoy this bloody journey. You know, I truly believe that part of being a conscious, uh, that is quite a tongue twister, being a conscious entrepreneur is really enjoying the ride. So um, I really hope this video has helped today. It's been an honor to have you here with me on this journey and I want to thank you for your contribution. Again, please share any, any comments that you've thought or thoughts or questions that you've got below so that we can continue the conversation uh, and have a look out for the next video which um, I'll be talking about finding that balance between the head and the heart and becoming even more embodied, which I, which in my experience is part of the journey of being a conscious entrepreneur. Uh, so thank you again for staying with me. Can't wait to see you on the next video and ciao for now. Take care. Bye-bye.